Bonjour, uh, you're listening to Negative, interview with Lech Kowalski at Feed Marseille. This is Paris too, c'est Paris aussi. This is the title of your new documentary, Lech Kowalski, shot in the north of Paris. You're following a character, a Native American, with a sporting baseball cap and the slogan Native Pride on it. You're walking with him, looking at slums and migrants and other things. So Lech Kowalski, what was the starting point of this documentary for you? Hmm. Um, well, I mean, the, the story... Um The story begins really the way it's it's the way that I met Ken because I I met him on the day that my mother died, and um, and you know I um, she died at, you know in the early morning and I met him at at midi at, at noon, and um, when I was having a coffee in a cafe and you know he came in and we looked at each other and I was kind of thinking about life and. Um, he, you know, Ken looks very particular, and when I discovered he's an Indian, I was really um, kind of like, wow, because when I was uh, a, a young boy, I lived in, in Wisconsin on a farm, and our neighbors were Indians, and and uh, they were kind of important for my mother, you know, so so it was like, oh, wow, this, uh, who's this Indian? Why is he coming? You know, why did I meet this Indian on the day she died? And then he came there to visit his son, but he also came there because he's a sculptor, he makes urns. So he said he'll make an urn for, him, for my mother's ashes. And then, you know, we started talking and, and we, we talked for about two hours that day. And, and in my mind, I thought, wow, you know, this is like, like a gift for my mother. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll make a film with, about this because I usually use, all my films I think are, come out of my story somehow, you know, things that people that I meet. And that, this was the beginning of me thinking about making the film. Eventually, after, after spending a lot of time with him in America, um, Ken and I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe we should make a film. And, uh, and, and the idea was for Ken to come to Paris, so where he can feel free, not be in America, not be on a reservation. And the idea was like, okay, let's see what happens. There was no plan to make a specific kind of film. In my mind, I wanted, to, you know, I didn't. I wanted to make a film about Paris also, but but uh, the Paris that I know, not not the tower, uh, the Eiffel Tower, this kind of thing. Um, so I thought, oh, okay, let's let's walk around areas that are interesting to me. And Ken had never been in this kind of situation, and 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 this, and we 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 walked around for a month. And we filmed a lot of stories, but this was the, the most important story, the story that has the most resonance. And he met somebody. He wanted to meet somebody, and he met the boxer. And then the boxer disappeared, but the boxer was... You know, he liked this boxer because, in a way, um, the, the boxer is a very strong person. And, and, and when Ken and the boxer talked to each other, It was, it was not about anything specific. It was just about, you know, him teaching him how to box and just, it was not about, okay, hello, what do you do with this kind of thing? It was just, it was, there, was a, there was a connection between them and, and it was about feelings. And, and, and what, I, what, I, what I like to do with my cinema is really, I mean, I'm really interested in shooting, filming feelings and emotions and, and they were there, you know? So that, those scenes that I filmed with Ken and the boxer and the immigrants were the, the scenes that I shot that had the most emotions. Now, because we were filming in France, you know, France is a culture of, of a lot of talking and a lot of analysis. And we filmed a lot of that too um, with Ken, but but I, I didn't use any of that material. So you said you shot for one month? Yeah, in, in Paris, yeah. Did you shoot in different areas or did you focus on just... Uh, 18th uh, district we, we we went to different areas but but it, the, it, it was boring to film there I mean we went to uh, you know we went to the typical tourist places because it was something as a reference we filmed in uh, in places where um, 
um, you, saw, you saw where the walk is, you know. Uh, we worked, you know, we we, we, we filmed in, uh, God, I mean, we filmed some really amazing dance uh, scenes uh, in, in uh, sort of underground clubs. Um, but the northern part of Paris, the northeast, which is not far from where I live, it's an area that I was really fascinated by because of the people, the immigrants who are there. So we, 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 we spend the most time there. How did you manage to film with, with him? Did you, were you always filming or did you discuss with him what, what to film? Or was it just uh, f following him like uh, a character? We, 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 we never discussed what to film. Uh, sometimes when, when, we were walk, when we were filming, I would say, oh, Ken, Ken, can you walk that way? Or can you walk this way? And, I, and then Ken became kind of an actor, but I, but I never said, okay, do this, do that, do this. It was just, a, it was just like, um, it was Ken giving me permission to film with him and to see where it goes, because that's the most important thing I wanted to do. I wanted to see where this will go, because we had no idea. It was every day we would go out in the morning and we would end up with some scenes. And, and then when we discovered this particular area, we kept returning there, returning there, returning there. And then I said, okay, this is my story. I mean, you know, like when you're making this kind of film, you film a lot of material. The reason you film a lot of material is you're looking for the story. But once you, th once you find the story, then you throw all that material out. But by that point, I know how to film Ken, what, you know, what his best angles are, you know. I mean, I, I work out a lot of problems. So there's a lot of things that I that are not important to me because they all they are is getting to some, know someone with a camera and getting and and Ken learned how I film and so he started acting for the camera you know in his own way not like an official actor but you you kind of develop a relationship where you're working together and then you say oh yes we're making a movie what is it about well we don't know because who knows it's because the construction of the movie was made in the salle de montage you know there was no construction there when we were filming it just oh you know things happened so it was really a, it's like it's like shooting scenes the best way i could with a camera in the right place and then maybe shooting something else that's connected to that or ken is looking for the boxer for instance And it comes out of the reality. It doesn't come out of waking up in the morning and saying, okay, we're going to do this and that. We, we just went to the, to the area and things would happen and, and we would start filming that way. I don't know. It's like, it's like, it's like pure, pure creativity without the facade of, of, a, of a scenario and, and all that stuff. I mean, you know, even with a scenario, you know, the, you, you know it's, at one point you, 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 want to, you want to throw away the scenario and get into something. You know, the scenario is there just as a, as a plan, you know, to, to get to something. But you're looking for something that there has no words to it. It's like it's pure cinema. And with Ken, the camera likes him. And he was, you know, he was, he was an actor without being an actor and without being like a cinema verite or, you know, it's like it was just it just happens, you know. About the pure cinema, you, you work with a camera. Is the tool of the camera important to you, uh, the choice of the tool, and maybe how you can uh, uh, maneuver it? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, the, cam the, the, the camera to me is like fucking magic, man. <laughs> 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 I, I, you know, to, to, it's like the camera, you know, I, if, okay, I, everybody works in different ways, right? But I, the thing that I, is important to me is that I, I, I have to look at the cut, you know, and see everything. Because what I see is how I construct my story. So meaning that I may, I may not know what my story is because I, the story really comes together in, the, in a montage, but I know the things that I need to capture in a certain way. And, the only way, and because it's reality, um, I can't uh, tell someone, okay, uh, Monsieur Cameraman, you know, shoot this for me because, yeah, maybe you'll shoot it, but, it, but there are things that happen, you know, Ken looks this way or the, or the light goes this way and suddenly I know that I have something and I, and, I, and, and I know it at the moment that I have it. You know what I mean? It's not like going home at night to the studio and saying, okay, what do we have, you know? I, I already know it. So when I go into the studio, I, I, I'm, I'm throwing things away because I know that I have a certain feeling that I wanted. And that feeling is only there because of who I am as a person, because 
all of us, I mean, you know, maybe people will think this is fucking bullshit, but all of us have like an energy uh, force around us. And that energy force allows you to, to move in certain ways and, co and, and, like, and, and, and come together with people or with objects and, and how to react to that with a camera is what I'm trying to do. So it's like it's like this. There's no words for this energy. It just it just happens. And I think the great the, the great cinema has that. Uh, you're talking about montage, traditional cinema. There is an editor that helps you, but you you edit yourself. How do you work uh, alone at the montage? Well, I mean, every film is a little different. But what happened with this film is that I had um, I had, I created a, a an editing workshop in a university in, in Switzerland. And uh, I had three students that I worked with, you know, as teaching. And I said, okay, let's 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 do a workshop. And what we would do is we would look at the material together, and they would play with it, doing uh, editing and montage. And I would and I would sort of think about it, you know, we would discuss it, and I would think about what's going on. And then eventually, I took all this material and I and, and I went back to the studio myself and put it together. But going and working with them was kind of interesting because. When I'm editing, um, what I, the primary thing I do, it's hard to explain, is okay. You have, you have, you have all your material. You have your 50 hours, right? The thing I do is I go through the 50 hours, and I don't look for the story, but I look for the best material. So I cut everything out that's not good, and then I, with the good material, I start, I start to construct the story. So it's 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 the story is constructed around not a story that I want to tell, but a story of, around the good, the good material. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's like, um, this is the dangerous thing about montage. The dangerous thing is that sometimes when you have an idea, okay, this film is going to be about this or this, you end up using bad material because you have a, an objective. And, the, and, the, and sometimes you need bad material to meet your objective. But, with, but I think that for the cinema that I'm interested in, The cinema that I shoot, I, I, I try to make a film with only the good material and then eliminate all the bad stuff so that I have as much strong material as possible. What is bad stuff to you in your material? What, what's bad is, is um, stuff that doesn't have emotion. That, that, that I don't, like for instance, um, I don't like uh, too much exposition. I like to have the exposition be in the shots. You know, so like, you know, like I don't, I try not to have a master shot and then this kind of thing. It's, it's, um, I try to, I try to have the master shot be part of a scene and not be artificially a master shot. It's kind of a, it's, it's one explanation, but there's so many of them that, uh, it, it has to do with how, how the camera moves left or right or, you know, light falls on something. It's just, it's just what has the feeling that, uh, that, conveys something in this particular scene that I want to say and it's it's it's, it's <laughs> I don't know how to what the rules are like for instance the boxing scene in the film that was a re an amazing thing to film because it was about it was about it was like a, a dance performance and it was about a kind of a very masculine communication and Ken was really into it and so was the boxer so that was um I mean, I really enjoyed film, filming that because it was it was it was like filming a, a Fred Astaire dance routine. You know, it had nothing to do with reality. It just had to do with some kind of emotional connection between the two of them about you know this kind of maleness. You know, um, so when I looked at it on 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 the, on the uh, in the salle de montage, I was like, wow, this is really interesting. So let's make it long. Let's have fun with it because it's like the sex scene in the film. You know, it is the sex scene in the film. The final cut that we are seeing in the feed uh, is about uh, one hour. One hour, yeah, like 50, 58 minutes, 59 minutes. Yeah. Was it a choice for for you, or did you want maybe to get more or to have a longer form for the movie? No, no. Uh, originally, I thought maybe it would be like a two-hour movie, but but as I as I started looking at the material. The objective was to have a, a short movie. Oh, sorry. So, so, so it has power, and you, you know, and 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 and, and the, um, the film has a the film is very simple in structure, and and and, and but it has a lot of complexity to it, and that complexity 
is, 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 is best told in a short amount of time because I think it has a lot of emotional power. I think a lot of films nowadays should be shorter. <laughs> films in general are too long, but that's another story. So we here at the FID Marseille, which is the first uh, uh, European festival to reopen uh, after the COVID crisis. What did you do during the COVID crisis? Did you watch movies or did you do something else? Well, during the COVID crisis, the most important thing that I that I wanted to do was not to be trapped by the uh, by the official way that you have to act and do things, and I didn't want to lose to lose my humanity. I was very I was very scared about that. I didn't want to be kind of a a voyeur, you know what I mean, like looking out into the world, you know, scared. Um, I mean, I know people who didn't go out of their apartments for two months or their homes, which is fucking crazy, man. You know, I could never do that. I, I was filming the entire time. We're going to make a movie, but not like a fucking... In Paris? Uh, yeah, I was filming in... No, I was filming in Ponton, where I live. It, the, the idea was to make a, a movie in the area where I live. And I, I filmed the. I, I filmed until uh, after the um, confinement in ended. In the one kilometer that you were allowed to, way, to yeah, go? Yeah, yeah. And it was fucking incredible. And it's going to be an amazing film with a lot of power because, well, for a lot of reasons, but it was, it was a way to, to, to be free. And, 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 and um, I want, you know, the film is about freedom in a way, you know, it's, it's hard to talk about it because I haven't, I, I just film I just did the uh, tournage and, and I'm beginning to edit a little bit, but it's really very powerful. I mean, I, I say this powerful, yeah. It has, it has something about, about reality that's not about fucking COVID or, you know, the virus or anything else. It's about something totally different. But what did you film? Uh? You know what I filmed? I filmed, I filmed encounters with my neighbors, with people that I... And, you know, I mean, you know, when you live in a city like Paris and Ponton is like, you know, Akute, you know, right next to Paris, you know, you don't know most of the people, right? So I spent almost three months getting to know the people that, that, uh, that I never talked to, you know, you don't talk to the, the butcher or the, the, the bus driver or the, uh, the black guy who's homeless or the Arab guys on the streets, you know, selling drugs or the doctor or the pharmacist. You, you talk to them briefly because you need things or whatever, or you avoid them because you're afraid. But I, but I actually went in and I, I just spent time with all these people And eventually that took us to a story, or a, quite an amazing story, which I won't tell you because I still have to do it. And it's, it's, it's difficult to talk about it, but it's a very, it's a very powerful story about, about how people rebelled, but people, you know, people don't know how to rebel because they're afraid to, but the COVID, because there's so many problems in society, the COVID gave them a little, it said, okay, man rebel a little bit let's see what you can do and some people rebelled you know without hurting other people you know i mean you know we we rebelled but we stayed within the parameters of one kilometer because who the fuck knew i mean i remember the first week of the of the uh, virus was like you know you're scared you know you don't know what's going to happen you know you will you get sick or not i mean you know so so we have to we have to obey the rules but the rules gave us a structure within which to work So we filmed. We have about 150 hours of material. What you say about rebellion makes me think about the refugees from Afghanistan that you filmed in the, uh, This Is Paris too. Can they rebel too? This is, because they are in exile from their country because of the war that, war that has been going on for 40 years. Uh, but can they rebel in, uh, in Paris? Well, I mean, you know, they're... they're Jesus, I mean, it's a, it's a really difficult question i think that they're you know they they have to try to fit they have to try to fit into french life so their rebellion is about you know there's there's there are little rebellions every day um you know for instance when we were filming there was a new rule new r rule put out by the city that you cannot give food or or, or water to the uh, refugees you know That, so, so you have to kind of find ways to rebel to do to do that. But I, I, I mean, I don't think that that they're interested in rebellion, because they're they're interested in they they're they already rebelled by leaving their country. 
you know. Um, the boxer in a, in a film rebelled. He left the army. You know, he, he, you know, he rebelled because he didn't want to be killed by the Taliban. So he, what, so he, I mean, it was very difficult for these people to come to Paris. You know, it's very hard. You know, you know the story. It's like, you know, a lot of them don't make it. So their, their rebellion, you know, like my, my, my parents were refugees in America. And I grew up that way. You don't really rebel in that way. You, you, you're thinking about something else. And you're thinking about survival. And within that survival, you find little ways to rebel. Like, for instance, when we were young in, in America, we didn't have food. So my mother made friends with somebody who worked in a bakery. And at, so she would rebel in this way. At the end of the day, she would go to the, meet this man and he would give her the bread and the, and the, and the uh, croissant or whatever um, to, for us to eat. But that, is that a rebellion? Well, not... It, Yes, it, it, it's a rebellion in, in the sense that she's not, not a consumer. You know what I mean? She's finding ways to get things uh, to, to be able to survive. So uh, I don't know. The, the idea of rebellion is, is, is very complex now in our society. And I think that a lot of people now don't know how to rebel because they're afraid to. Because the corporate system has created a structure for us. I mean, look look at you. You know, you, you, um, if, if you go out into the world... You don't have that many choices of what you can do because you have to, you're sort of, you, you know, the corporate system impinges itself on you, right? I know so many young people that, you know, there, there's no way for them to get a job because they can't do the kind of job they want to do, like in a film business, because there's like walls, you know? So, you know, what, you know, do you want to work for McDonald's or, you know, work for a lawyer or whatever? I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, so the, the rebellion is, is different now than what, what, what it, than what it was when I was your age, you know? So... It, the definition of rebellion is changing, and I think the COVID thing will maybe kind of give another way to rebel. And I don't know what that is yet, you know, but I think we're going to be facing that. Does the concept of epiphany uh, can apply in what you filmed in, uh, in Paris in this documentary? Like uh, maybe little miracles and... Uh... You have to have an epiphany in every film. Because that's the, I think that the epiphany is the reason you're constructing the film. Certainly in, in the montage. You know, when, when I'm filming, I, I find little epiphanies all the time. But, it's, but, but they're just connected to the reality of what I'm filming. But in the, in the montage, I mean, I haven't thought about this too much, so I'm going to just say it. Because it's something that is more intuitive than intellectual for me. But if a film that I'm making doesn't have a moment of epiphany in it, then it's a failure. So it's very important. And, and um, I don't know what the moment of, of epiphany is in this film. There's maybe a few different moments, but the, the, there comes a moment in a film where the audience is relaxed with the film and they're waiting for the epiphany. <laughs> You know, so in the beginning they were saying, "Oh yeah, well, this is this, oh this is what the story is about." So what do you wait for at that point? I don't think you're waiting for a conclusion to the plot. You're pl you're waiting for something emotional, which is the epiphany. So it's very important. Thank you, Lech Kowalski, for My for pleasure. this interview. Is uh, the is the movie going to be released in the theaters and maybe? It's, it, the situation now is so crazy with COVID <laughs> and everything that I don't know yet. You know. Um, We'll see. I mean, because right, right now it's a bordel everywhere, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so I don't know. I don't. I don't. You know, I don't even know what's going to happen in the film industry in the next few months. You know, but I'm happy that this, fe this festival is happening because it's kind of it's, we needed something. You know, I mean, I really enjoyed being in the film in the cinema because it's like, oh yeah, I can be in the cinema. And I mean, this is a, you know, talk about epiphany. When the COVID thing happened, we were filming. I filmed a woman who runs a cinema, uh, and I realized that the epiphany for me is is not to have. I'm not worried about food, or or you know all those kind of things. I'm kind of in, 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 worried about um, the, my epiphany was what's important to me, and I discovered that wow, the cinema is really important to me in a different way than before. Because if I, if I can't go to the cinema because it doesn't exist anymore, that means I can't make films. And suddenly, I don't know why I exist, you know? But the cinema as a physical place. A as a physical place. And as, a, as, a, as what you do. As what you, how you think. 
you know so for me that's kind of like oh yeah this is you know as as the whole thing was coming to a conclusion after the lockdown lifted i thought oh yeah it's it's survival's not about the food survival survival is about some kind of dream that you can achieve in your life you know and if i can't do that then things are fucked up man you know